All right, you guys, I am super excited to talk to you today about the three strategies to attract your best clients. So first off, when we're talking about clients and your best clients, your best clients, not someone else's best clients, but yours, who are they? How do we identify them? Who is it that shares values with you that you actually want to work with? So who do you want to serve? Is it everyone? Sometimes when we're brand new in our businesses, we'll take anyone, everyone, someone, right? Who's done that before? <laughs> Did that get you in trouble? It always does. And I get it. Sometimes it's really just about that bottom line, especially when you're just starting out or maybe even coming out of this pandemic. But what I want you to keep in mind is that you don't have to take anyone, everyone, someone, because there is a line of people out there that share your same values and want to buy your product or service and would be the most amazing clients for you. You just have to target them. That's all. So I know everyone has heard the phrase target market. It means something different to everyone. And it may even be a scary phrase, target market. I don't want a target market. I want everyone to buy my product or service. If you're throwing a dart without the dartboard, you never know what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. If you're throwing a dart at a dartboard and you hit the bullseye every single time, you know that you're going to be working with your best clients. How do we do that? One, you have to be specific. When you start to define your target market and you have a defined target market, you're gonna have better marketing and oh, by the way, spend less money on marketing because you're after one particular group of people. For instance, if I wanted to target women business owners, who have one team member or less, it would cost me a lot less to market to them versus all women in a 25 mile radius. Make sense? So you're gonna attract your best customers with target marketing. You're gonna create loyalty so that they continue to buy from you. And not only loyalty monetarily, but they're gonna start telling all their friends and people who share their same values about your product or service. They're gonna attract more of your best clients. And of course, the bottom line grows from there. The more you know about your target market, the easier it is to replicate. So I would challenge you, write down your target market, take a pen and paper, target market, you've probably tried it before, maybe you wanna try it again, sit down and really concentrate on who is your best client? What do they look like? And write their name down. Write their name down. Who is it? it might be Bob. It might be Sally. It could be the guy down the street. Write their name down and start to describe them. How old are they? Are they married? Do they have children? How old are the children? Are they homeschooling right now? Or are they hiring a tutor? Do they live in a community? What kind of house do they live in? What neighborhood are they in? How far away from you physically, if that matters, are they? What's their occupation? Are they working from home right now? Are they in oil and gas? Do they own their own business? What about their spouse, if they have a spouse? What kind of work do they do? These are all of the demographic type questions that you need to ask or write about your best client today. So who is it? Bob is your best client. Describe him. There are a lot more to this list. This is just the top five. So start that. The other thing you need to think about are the psychographics. What is their lifestyle? What are their hobbies? Do they like to boat? Does the husband play golf? Maybe the wife plays tennis. Are they part of a club? A boating, do they sail? Are there kids in a club? Their kids might be in a club as well. 
Those are all things that you need to take into consideration as you hone in on that target. Remember, when you throw a dart at a wall with no dartboard, you get anything or anyone. When you throw a dart at a dartboard with a target on it, you get closer to the people that you want to work with. And they know people just like them. They're going to attract more clients that you want to work with. What? So what do your best clients want? So now that you've identified them, now that you have your target market identified, you have to get in their head. What do your clients want and how can you serve them? First, you have to learn their thoughts. Well, how do you do that? Gosh, I wish we could all read minds. How amazing would that be, reading minds? Well, we can't but we can certainly put ourselves in their shoes. What if when you put yourself in their shoes, you thought about their frustrations and their fears and their wants and their aspirations? So if I want to attract women business owners with one team member or less, and they happen to be in the hairstylist business, I need to put myself in her shoes and think about what is she frustrated with? What are her fears? Maybe she's frustrated because she makes appointments and people don't show up. What is her fear? Maybe she's afraid that no one will even call to make an appointment. And on the positive side of the token, what are her wants or her aspirations? What are her goals? Put yourself in your target market's shoes and start to make a list of all of the things that they're frustrated with, they may fear, they want, or they have goals. And if you don't know, ask some of your current clients, gosh, how amazing would they feel you already have a client today. I go to my hairstylist and I say, you know what? I want to attract more clients like you. Would it be okay if I interviewed you? And ask questions. They would be honored, honored to answer those questions for you. So understand what your client's needs are. You want to solve their circumstances. So they may feel like this guy hanging over the sharks. What are their circumstances? What product or service do you have that would serve their needs? There's an easy way to do that. So you have client circumstances after you did your interview or maybe you already know what those answers are. You put those across the top and down the side, you're gonna to start to create or brainstorm the solutions to those problems. I'll go back to my hairstylist. She's afraid or is frustrated with the fact that people book appointments and they don't show up. What solution might I have to solve that? What if I suggested to her that she get on an automated texting system that automatically texts her clients the day before and a few hours before their appointment as a reminder. What if that one person that's on her team, which happens to be an administrative person, made phone calls the day before? What if we made the client feel special? What if my client made her clients feel special? We're so excited about having you come in to get your hair done tomorrow. I haven't seen you in a really long time and it's gonna be an amazing experience. And oh, by the way, I've got coffee ready for you because I know that's your favorite drink. Make them feel special, right? So this worksheet or some table like this is a great idea to look across the top at what are the client's circumstances? What are they frustrated with? What do they fear? What are their goals? Those are some circumstances you could put across the top. And then down the left, you would start to fill in solutions. What is it that you already offer 
that can help solve the circumstances that your client may be in. How can I attract my best clients? So I'm going to focus here on the people that you already know, the networks that you're already involved in. Because we can go out and market on our own, we can go to Facebook, we can go to LinkedIn, we can up our SEO, we can create a beautiful website. But how do we leverage the people we already know to bring us our best clients? So I'm gonna concentrate here down this middle section. It could be suppliers, associations, a mastermind group that you belong to, a networking group, it could be the chamber. These are all groups that you may already be engaged in. You may already know people in that space. Share your target market with them. You may have to do some education so that they can help you. Share your target market with them. Tell them exactly who it is that you're looking for so that they can help you attract your best customers. So these are just the top five categories when I talk about context spheres, and I'm gonna give you a definition in just a second. But when I have a target market, what I really wanna do is I'm looking to build relationships with other business owners who can send me my best clients, right, where I'm networking. I'm gonna look at my target market and figure out who else is my target market buying a product or service from? Who else is my target market buying a product or service from? So let's go back to the hairstylist. So the hairstylist, my best client, is my target market. Female business owner, one person or less, she's in the, what I would consider the health and wellness industry. What if I went and built a relationship with someone who's in event services, like a wedding photographer? Do you think a wedding photographer might be able to introduce me to more hairstylists? You bet. What about financial services? Do you think that my hairstylist has a CPA? Do you think that CPAs or bookkeepers are working for other hairstylists? You bet. Those are the people that I want to go back to and start to build relationships with. Tell them who my target market is and share referrals with each other. When I talk about contact spheres, I was talking about financial services or somebody who's in the event industry, the CPA, the bookkeeper, or the um, wedding photographer. These are people that my clients, my best clients are going to for a different product or service, or it may be they're going to someone on advice on how to find me. Or they might know about my ideal client before me. So that's what a contact sphere is. It's somebody that you probably already know that shares the same target market as you. All you have to do is ask. So let's go to this example. Health and wellness. That's where my hairstylists, my hairstylist is in this box, right? She is also my target market. So I could go into the health and wellness space, maybe to uh, go build a relationship with a spa owner or someone like that, right? And health and wellness that would help feed that hairstylist back to me. Or it could be home services. Maybe I know that my hairstylist lives in a particular neighborhood and they use a particular service. It could be an HVAC person or a plumber. Those people interface potentially with my client. Now I use a hairstylist as an example. You could put anyone in that target market. Who is your best client? And remember what I said at the beginning. Think about who your best client is right now write their name down and describe them with the demographics and the psychographics. Hone in on that target market, figure out what their circumstances are and how your product or service can service those needs and use your networks to feed you 
your best clients. Again, remember, the three strategies to attract your best clients are identify your target market, understand your client's circumstances, and use your networks. Thank you.